today I'm addressing an opportunity that only comes in this moment, and it comes in this moment because Frank Gehry is 83 years old. And if he and I don't act now, there will be other types of opportunities, but never anything quite as dramatic or possible as this moment presents us with. It's a great vision. It, he came to me because I've done it now several times, and he knows we can help him deliver that vision. I just wanted to give a bit of an overview of how I've come to this project. I opened an art gallery the same moment that my father bought a theater, the Royal Alexandra, on King Street. And that theater was offered for sale, and all of the purchasers wanted to make a parking lot. My father didn't know better, and he bought it as a theater. And that was the start of an evolution in the neighborhood that brought people to the west when at that time city planners were expecting everything to go to the east. Now we motivated the people to use the western part of King Street with the Royal Alex. But we no longer are the motivator, I feel. Having theaters that are not full all the time is not better than having art museums and a relationship with OCAD and a relationship with the city and an involvement of retailing and an involvement of other amenities that will develop through this project. The towers we're talking about uh, instead of all of them being one design, we're trying to differentiate them so that they have a different uh, character and yet relate to each other. These towers can become a symbol of what Toronto can be. I am not building condominiums. I am building three sculptures for people to live in. We've oriented the circulation so that it connects to the John Street Cultural Corridor. As a kid, I used to go up and down John Street. And to think of it now as a major cultural corridor is exciting. I don't know. <laughs> this is the first freestanding building that he will have ever built in this country. And uh, he is one of our great sons. And I believe that uh, being able to live in this house might be like living in the Casa Mila uh, by Antonio Gaudi in Barcelona, which was also controversial in its day but has come to be a, a great public space today. I was asked if, if our team, David's team, is committed to architecture, and I tell you, a million percent they are. We've tested him. <laughs> For Toronto Theatre, I actually believe that this is a, a enhancing, not destructive. If you've really been following the theatre, you've watched how many weeks were open in the Royal Alex, and how many weeks were open in the Princess of Wales, and how many weeks were open in the Panasonic and the Ed Mervish Theatre. And if you are really involved, you would know that each of those buildings has been closed half a year and open half a year. And therefore, they have sat not animating the, the neighborhoods, but in fact, being destructive to their neighborhoods by being inactive. By taking one theatre out, all three of the others come to full life. And that actually enhances the neighborhood because there's constant traffic. And when we need another theater, just as I did in 1993, I will build another theater. I'm not retreating from the theater at all. I'm as involved in the theater as I've ever been, and I'll be deeper involved because that's what I do. I do theater, I do art, and I'm interested in saying who we are as people through architecture. We're not going to do something that's going to damage Toronto. We're going to enhance it if we can.